Welcome to Lulu's Storytime, where imagination comes to life. Get ready to dive into a world full of heartwarming tales that will capture your imagination as you drift off to sleep. Are you my monster? Written by Amanda Knoll, illustrated by Howard McWilliam. This is my monster. He has sharp teeth, scratchy claws, and a long tail. He is green and brown. Are you my monster? You are green, but you do not have sharp teeth, scratchy claws, or a long tail. You are not my monster. Are you my monster? You have scratchy claws and a long tail, but you have no teeth and you are red. You are not my monster. Are you my monster? You have sharp teeth and scratchy claws, but you do not have a long tail. And you are blue. You are not my monster. Are you my monster? You have sharp teeth, scratchy claws, and a long tail. But you are yellow and orange. You are not my monster. Are you my monster? You have sharp teeth, but you have no claws. You have no tail. And you are purple. You are not my monster. Are you my monster? You have no teeth, you have no claws, you have no tail, and you are pink. Nothing matches. You are definitely not my monster. Are you my monster? You have a long tail, but you do not have sharp teeth. You do not have scratchy claws. And you are yellow. You are not my monster either. Will I ever find my monster? Are you my monster? You have sharp teeth, grr. You have scratchy claws, scritch, scritch. You have a long tail, swish, swish. And you are green and brown. Yay! You are my monster. I am so glad I found you. Now I can go to sleep. I need my monster. Written by Amanda Knoll, illustrated by Howard McWilliam. Read to you with permission from Flashlight Press. Tonight, when I looked under the bed for my monster, I found this note instead. Gone fishing, back in a week, Gabe. What was I going to do? I needed a monster under my bed. How was I supposed to get to sleep if my monster was gone? I tried to sleep, but it wasn't the same without Gabe. I missed his ragged breathing. His nose whistling the scrabbling of his uncut claws. How would I ever get to sleep without Gabe's familiar scary noises and his spooky green ooze? It was no use. Gabe would be gone for a week, and I just had to have a monster. I climbed quietly out of bed so my parents wouldn't hear me. Grown-ups have some strange ideas about monsters under beds. I knocked on the floorboards, then scrambled back under my covers. I waited nervously. Would a new monster appear? What would he be like? Would his snorting be as cheerful as Gabe's? When I heard some creaking under my bed, I knew that the substitute monster had arrived. Good evening, said a low breathy voice. My name is Herbert, and I will be your monster for the evening. Herbert? What kind of name is that for a monster? You don't sound scary at all. Have you ever scared a kid before? Well, no, but I have read all the best books on the topic. Do you have long teeth and scratchy claws? I asked. No, but I have an overbite, and I'm a mouth breather. Listen. <sighs> Herbert's panting was kind of scary, but it wasn't enough for me. Listen, Herbert, I'm sorry. I just don't think this is going to work. It's nothing personal, but I really need a monster with claws. Picky, picky, Herbert complained. As you wish, I'll go. There was some more creaking, and Herbert was gone. 
Some scratching warned me that a second monster had appeared. Good evening, he said in a high, silky voice. My name is Ralph. I understand you need a monster with claws. If you would please lean over, I will hold out an arm for inspection. I crouched on the edge of the bed, hoping to see a horrible, shaggy arm with sharp, ragged nails. Instead, I was surprised to see sleeky brushed fur with smooth, shiny claws. Excuse me, I don't mean to be rude, I asked. But is that nail polish on your claws? Yes, it is, Ralph replied. I believe professional monsters should always be well-groomed. I could tell this was not going to work either. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Ralph, but... I need a monster with scary claws, like Gabe's, I thought. I heard some more scratching, and I knew Ralph was gone. A minute later, a third voice from under the bed rasped. Check out these claws, kid. I gathered my courage and peered over the bed. The claws were impressive, jagged and dark, and razor sharp. So far, so good. I was a little nervous. Could you stick out your tail? I whispered. Sure, but don't get scared. I peeked through my fingers at the slimy tail slithering over the foot of my bed. That's when I noticed the bow. Are you a girl monster? Of course I am, she snapped. I'm Cynthia. Do you have a problem with that? Um, yeah, I do, I admitted. I definitely need a boy monster. Boy monsters are for boys, and girl monsters are for girls. Everybody knows that. Well, aren't you a picky one, she sniffed, and then she was gone. Was I being too picky? No. I knew that my monster needed to be well-clawed and menacing. The whole point of having a monster, after all, was to keep me in bed, imagining all the scary stuff that could happen if I got out. Then I heard a shuffling noise. and some slobbering. A fourth monster was under my bed. Hey, my name's Mac. One look at his claws proved that Mac was a big, scuffy boy monster. I shivered. Maybe this one would work out. Those are excellent claws. But do you have a long tail? I leaned over to see. No, my tail is stumpy, Mac slurped. But I do have... An unusually long tongue. Why would I be afraid of a long tongue? I asked. Oh, I don't know, he said, trying to sound terrifying. You never know when you I might lick you. I fell back on the bed laughing. <laughs> well, if you're not even going to try to work with me, Mac whined. I held in my giggles. I really don't think you should send me away, he warned. Kids who reject five monsters in one night. I did not reject five monsters tonight, I interrupted. My regular monster went fishing. Fishing, eh? Maybe he just left because you're so picky. Fine, I'm out of here. But I wouldn't expect another monster tonight if I were you. How was I ever going to get to sleep without my monster? I was surprised to hear more creaking under the bed. Loud creaking, with scratching. I, uh, I thought no more monsters were going to appear tonight, I said. Sorry I'm late, kid. Whew. It was Gabe. Then the bed trembled as Gabe unfurled his spiked tail. He was daring me to guess where he might pop up. I shivered. So, you had some substitute monsters tonight, Gabe said, sharpening his claws on my bedpost. Were you scared? Then Gabe started tapping. I could tell he wanted to know if I still needed him. No other monster can scare me like you, I giggled, diving under my covers and pulling them up tight. Through the blanket, I heard Gabe's soft, comforting snorts. 
Ha! I knew it. We are made for each other, he growled. When my blanket started to slip off the bed, I knew Gabe was ready to eat. Now, if you could please stick out your foot, he said, I'd like to nibble your pinky. I yanked my blanket back up and scrunched my feet in so Gabe couldn't get them. No toes tonight, but you can have this, I offered pushing a pillow off the bed. I didn't even hear it hit the floor. Gabe was back. The ooze was perfect. Everything was back to normal. I shivered again. I'd be asleep in no time. D is for drool. My Monster Alphabet. Written by Amanda Knoll, illustrated by Howard McWilliam. Oof. I can't sleep. My parents tell me count sheep, but that never works for me. I'll try saying my ABCs. A is for arms. B is for belly. C is for claws. D is for drool. E is for ear and earlobe and earring. F is for fluffy. G is for googly eyes. H is for horns. I is for icy. J is for jaws and jumping. K is for kisses. L is for legs and lashes. M is for mouths. N is for necks and noses. O is for ooze. P is for pigtails. Q is for quills. R is for rattle. S is for spikes. T is for tentacles and tongue and tail. U is for uh upside down. V is for vanish. W is for warts and wings. X is for exhausted. Y is for yawn and How I Met My Monster. Illustrated by Amanda Knoll. One night, when I reached under the bed for my truck, I found this note instead. Monsters meet here for final test. Z. Ha! Huh. My parents were obviously trying to trick me into staying in bed. I didn't believe in monsters. So I crumpled the paper, grabbed my truck, and zipped over to the garbage. I heard some creaking and rumbling, but I wasn't scared. Our house always made noises at night, but then a voice under the bed scolded. Stop that stomach rumbling. The child will hear you. Voices? Stomach rumbling? If this was part of my parents' trick, it was pretty cool. I peered into the inky blackness. Five pairs of eyes blinked back. See? Now he knows we're here, the voice sighed. One of you has broken monster rule number one. Maintain the element of surprise. This is no trick, I thought. There are monsters under my bed. A long-necked yellow monster slid out, followed by four little monsters. Rule number two, the yellow one instructed. Never block the bed. All of you, scoot over. Hey, I realized. That one must be their teacher. I sat up straight, mesmerized by the monster parade shuffling across my bedroom. That's better, the teacher monster said. Access to the bed is clear. Now, 
Who knows rule number three? The purple monster teetered on his tiptoes and gurgled. Get the child into bed. That's correct, Genghis. And how would you do that? Well, Mr. Z, I would roar my scariest roar. All right, give it a go. Genghis took a deep breath, <gasps> opened his mouth, and let out a tiny blurp. Stomach rumbling would have a better chance of getting me into bed than that funny little noise, I laughed. The child is right, said Mr. Z, shaking his head. That was not sufficiently scary. Genghis, I'm sorry. You're not the best monster for this child. There was some creaking. Genghis slunk beneath the bed. Before I could investigate where Genghis had gone, Mr. Z asked, Now, who wants to try to get the child into bed? The orange monster looked at the ceiling and the red monsters looked at the floor. Only the green one looked at me. First, he stared at my toes and started drooling. Then he took a step toward me and I heard that rumbling noise again. I sprang into bed so he couldn't get my feet. Mr. Z blinked. Very unconventional, Gabe. Your stomach, gurgles, seem to be what this child needs. What I needed was to make sure this little Gabe monster didn't eat my toes. Right, you three. The child is now in bed, said Mr. Z. As every monster knows, the ultimate objective is rule number four. Who can tell me what that is? The orange monster bounced and squeaked. Keep the child in bed until it falls asleep. Correct, Morgan. And how would you accomplish that? Shadow puppets, shadow puppets, she squeaked again. Gabe whistled through his nose, and I snickered. But Mr. Z said, Interesting idea. Try it. Morgan hopped onto my night table and flailed her arms near my lamp. Silly shadows blobbed onto the wall, and a cloud of fluffy fur tickled my nose. Ah, too! Morgan, stop at once, Mr. Z ordered. You're supposed to scare him, not make him sneeze. I'm sorry, but you're not a match either. Morgan's arms flopped to her sides, and she scuttled under my bed. There was some more creaking, and Morgan was gone. After all that sneezing, I really needed a tissue. Suddenly a huge shadow of uncut claws loomed across my room. Awesome, I thought, and kind of scary. I froze in place. Powerful performance, Gabe, said Mr. Z. But do either of you see a problem? Oh, I know, tripped the red monster. The child is out of bed again. Correct, Abigail, Mr. Z continued. And one of you must get him back in. Let's revisit rule number one. Maintain the element of surprise. All at once, the monsters vanished, then I heard more rumbling. Were they hiding in my closet, making noises to scare me? Ha! No! It was only my stomach rumbling. All this excitement was making me hungry. As I reached into the pantry, I heard some chattering behind me. I sure hoped it wasn't that toe-loving Gabe. I yanked open the fridge. Ha! It wasn't Gabe. It was just the red monster shivering on the shelf. Found you! I laughed. Nice try, Abigail, said Mr. Z. But this isn't working. You're not the right monster for this child. But Mr. Z, she whined, it's not my fault he's not scared of me. I'm sorry, Abigail. Let's go. Abigail clomped behind Mr. Z when I heard the creaking. I knew she was gone. I grabbed some crackers and headed upstairs, wondering if Gabe was gone too. I munched all the way down the hall. 
then went into the bathroom and brushed my teeth again. When I opened the door a minute later, Gabe was definitely not gone. He was right there and he was huge. I charged into my room and slammed the door. When I leaped into bed, I knew my toes were safe. Whew. I was surprised to hear breathing under my bed. Ragged breathing and stomach rumbling. Hey kid. Gabe growled. Good to see ya. I pulled my covers up tight. Now if you don't mind, I'd like to start the evening with the ominous spuddle of drool. I peeked over the edge of the bed. Green ooze spread soundlessly from underneath. Then the bed quivered as Gabe unfurled his spiked tail. Well, this looks quite promising, Mr. Z noted. When I heard some more creaking, I knew Mr. Z was gone. Gabe loomed over my bed and began sharpening his uncut claws on my bedpost. Huh, how'd you get so big? Rule number five, my friend, he explained. People food makes monsters grow. So thanks for the crackers. Got any toes I punch? I scrunched in my feet so Gabe couldn't get them. This was way better than playing with trucks. Gabe dove for it. His soft, comforting snorts filled the room as he snuffled the toy. I shivered. Kid, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Gabe was the monster for me. His snorts and ooze were perfect. I yawned, then shivered again. I was asleep in no time. Come back to Lulu's for more story time.